The Army Painter, War Games, Hobby Star is set. Is this what you need to start painting your miniatures for your games? Let's find out. One of the most common questions that we hear from people starting in the hobby or returning to it after a long hiatus is what paints should I buy? And companies trying to find a simple answer to this question have made starter sets. But which one is the one that you should buy? In an ideal world, a paint set should include all these following things. The three basic colors plus black and white. Add to that a few secondary colors so you don't have to mix paints as often and a few special paints that are going to make your life easier. The addition of tools or miniatures for practicing are great things to include, but they are not mandatory. The Army Painter Starter Set includes all the basic colors plus black and white, so that's a positive point already. These paints are super important because with them you can mix most of the other colors with just a little bit of practice. On secondary colors we have green, which I will argue is the most important of the three. Green is very useful for painting many of the creatures in our gaming universes, hence why I think it is the most important of the secondary colors. We also have brown, which is very easy to obtain just by adding a little bit of black to red or yellow or orange, but it is very very nice to have this color as well in the set. Additionally, we have a flesh color. Humans and humanoid creatures are very common in the games that we play, so having a flesh color is something that is going to save a lot of time. Remember that you can still get orange and add a little bit of white and that's going to make another flesh color if you are in a pinch to get one. At a glance it contains everything that you need to start painting miniatures, but then we get into the nitty gritty of what it means to paint armies. If you are going to paint big batches of miniatures or if you have an army project on mine, then having consistent mixes actually saves quite a lot of time. And here is where having secondary colors is so important. Unfortunately, we do not have orange or violet and that's something that will detract a little bit of the score. For orange, we just need to add a little bit of yellow to red or a little bit of red to yellow and we can obtain different shades of it. Violet, on the other hand, is very easy to obtain by mixing red and blue so we can still get those colors with the ones that we have in the box. Having metallic colors in the mix is something that helps beginners quite a lot. Many of us start painting miniatures just for the sake of getting them onto the gaming table, so having a metallic color is something that is going to save you time and it will still look quite nice. And my favorite addition to the paint set is this strong tone shade over here. Shades are very powerful tools that do not require much practice to get them to be used. Including this is a great asset for anybody that wants to paint miniature fast and for those of you who are beginners it's going to give you what it will look like superpowers on painting miniatures. So my first impression is that it contains exactly what I need to start painting the basic stuff in miniatures but Let's get to the nitty gritty of things here. Well, what am I missing? Well, when painting these night goblins, one of the colors that I would like to have is grey. It's not that it's a difficult color to obtain because you just need to mix black and white, but having a consistent grey out of the box, that would be great. Another color that I really miss is having a golden metallic. It adds that bling that you would like to have in certain areas of the miniatures. Unfortunately, gold is not as easy to obtain as other colors, but here I made a trick and I just washed a little bit of yellow on top of the silver and more or less made it work. The design of the bottles is an industry standard nowadays with a lot of benefits, but one particular caveat. Usually paints within these bottles will last longer because they will not get dry inside of it. However, mixing the medium and the pigment sometimes can be very difficult and that's where I get one of those small things over there. Paint consistency is a little bit confusing for me on the Army Painter. On the one hand, they acknowledge that the medium and the pigment separates inside the bottle, so they give you detailed instructions on how to fix that. It's worth noticing that the Army Painter thought about that as well and they have put inside a bead. This is going to make mixing much, much easier for you. If you don't have a vortex mixer like the one that I own, well then it's time to use some elbow grease and get ready for painting with a good warm up. And even having mixed them thoroughly, sometimes paint coverage is not that great, so you might have to go back and paint a couple of times just to get the color that you want. As a side note, some of the paints have very mundane names, whilst the others have somewhat more interesting ones. It is something that us fantasy and sci-fi wargame painters are used to seeing, so nothing to say here. The proof is in the pudding, so how did it fare painting miniatures in the middle hammer style, which is the one that I like the most? 
on a white base, the paints work quite well. So I think they actually need that. They are not very opaque. They don't have the coverage other brands have. So the white undercoat is something that is going to help get the vibrancy onto them. The paints in the box do give me options to paint both the goblins and the Slayer Dwarf. Layering highlights or blending or giving glazes is also not difficult to achieve with these paints. On the other hand, I still miss a gold color in the set. I think that will be something that will be very welcome. Including both orange and violet will be also a great addition. And although the brush is decent and it does its job, well, for me, I personally like having something a little bit bigger and more sharp. My final verdict on this started set, it's a good buy. It has a decent price tag, the paints are decent, and having the shade is going to make those of you wanting to learn how to paint miniatures very happy with it. On the other hand, I'm missing some important colors, but at this price range, it is understandable. Overall, the price and quality ratio, it is very good. You can get very good results with these paints and a little bit of practice. To get the most out of it, I think having a wet palette is paramount. Properly shaking the paints is super important and knowing how to mix colors is going to get a lot out of just 10 pots of paint. I'm going to give it a score of 7 out of 10. If you want to get into miniature painting, this is a good set. Watch this next and remember, my name is Miguel, this has been Rush the Wash and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Un beso, adios.